Hi guys, today we will go to Rose Mountain, the peak of Vancouver, Canada. Rose Mountain. I think here, babe. Inside the port. <laughs> Babe, here. Right. Take it. We are at the Gross Mountain. We need to ride the bus.
There's here. You can ask this guy. Ask this guy.
We're going up there. We're going to ride the other one too.
a zip line. You just put a zip line. To write this, we don't need to pay anything. Huh? It's not working. It's working. Look at it in it. So welcome to our five o'clock owl uh, interpretive session. My name is Devin. I'm the manager here. Yeah, I'm in a good position here. And I see we're all nicely spaced out. So if you say space out, I'll walk back and forth with the owls so we get to see them up close. This is uh, Odin, my glove here. He's our one-year-old male barred owl. I guess he's about a year and a half now. Date is eight. And then in the middle there we have Cleo. She's a female barn owl, the A-R-N. And then on the front end there is Athena. She's a horned owl. Sorry, my microphone. So we're going to uh, take a few minutes, about uh, five to ten minutes, and talk about owls in general and what they, uh, what traits they all share. And then we'll look at all three of these species and tell you a little bit more about their individual story and about their individual species. Let's see if we can get this one working a little better here. So uh, Odin, of course, is going to model for us since he's on my glove here. And the owls are members of the birds of prey category. And that just means that they're carnivores. So you're never going to find an owl eating a salad. They always eat meat. Of course, mice and small rodents are favorites. They can also eat, so they can eat insects in a pinch. And, and you know, they will even hunt rabbits and larger prey. So they're a little uh, different from other birds of prey. Of course, there's lots of different birds of prey. There's hawks, there's eagles, there's owls, and there's uh, vultures. But uh, owls are the only ones that have these beautiful facial discs. Of course, he's not going to look. Oh, there, uh, no? Okay. There, so his uh, facial disc is a unique feature for owls. Odin's is a little, uh, a little uh, scruffy right now because he's doing what we call a molt. He's changing out all his feathers. So he's just finishing growing in those feathers around his face with a whole new set of feathers this year. But those uh, facial discs, every owl has a slightly different facial disc, and that's used for their hunting. It's used specifically for their hearing. 
So owls have ears just like we do, but rather than have these flaps of skin, because you just get in the way, create drag, and if you ever stuck your head out a car window, you know it's really noisy, so that uh, doesn't work. But they have ear canals on either side of that facial disc, one on each side. And he's got that little ridge over his beak there that divides his face in two. And what's cool about owl ears is they're not in a straight line. Uh, that's what he's watching. So uh, they're not in a straight line like ours are. His left ear is a bit lower than his right ear. And that's for three-dimensional hearing. So he could hear that the mouse he's hunting is 10 feet in front of him and 0.2 inches off the ground and 2 degrees to the right. So very, very accurate hearing. Now he's also turning his head around there and he's, he's using another sense. He's using those great big beautiful eyes that he has there. He's got brown eyes, believe it or not. It's hard to see from there. They look really black. And they're uh, so large, they take up most of the space in his skull, so he doesn't have a lot of room for uh, bird brains in there. You might have heard of a uh, wise old owl, but that's a little bit of a myth. These guys aren't the brightest birds, it depends how you define intelligence. They're really good at what they do, but if you try and teach them new tricks and go to new places, they're not, uh, they're not very good at adapting. So those eyeballs are so big that he can't move them in their, in their sock. There's no room to do that. It would be like if we had grapefruit for eyes, and there's no room for ligaments. So we're kind of lucky we can keep our heads still. We can kind of move our eyeballs all around. Odin can't do that. So if you want to pretend to be an owl, you have to look straight over your nose and imagine you couldn't move your eyes. You'd be turning your head around a whole lot as well also. So our shopping malls would probably look a little different. The tram ride, we'd all be turning our heads. So in order to help accommodate that, owls have evolved to have more bones in their neck. So whereas humans have seven upper vertebrae, owls have uh, 14, so they have double the amount. And that allows them to turn that head about 270 degrees or most of the way around so they can get a better look and listen. Now, another thing that makes uh, owls a little different are all those fluffy body feathers that you see there. So owls are quite soft and quite dense, especially for Odin here and for Athena over there. They have a very dense underlayer, and that's uh, for warmth, because these guys are birds that live up in the mountains. So uh, Athena can handle temperatures to minus 40, minus 50 degrees, and Odin here uh, a little bit warmer, but still really low, uh, quite a bit below zero, and he's still okay. You notice that feathering goes all the way down onto his toes there. And his feathers are so important because they're basically his jacket, his protection from the elements. So that under layer keeps him warm, and then all these outer feathers here act like shingles on a house, and they overlap so that if it's raining out, I get soaked and he stays dry because it just rolled right off of those feathers, especially when he uh, organizes them. Like I said, he's a little scruffy up there. He's just finishing his molt. Because those feathers are so important, birds change them out every year. So every year after breeding season, sort of late summer, they drop all those feathers and start growing a whole new set. But they only do a few at a time because otherwise they look pretty silly. Now another thing is uh, allowing for silent flight. So these guys are really efficient and deadly predators. And one thing that they're known for is not making a sound while they're flying. So he might make a bit of noise when he takes off, but when he's in attack mode, there's no noise, no sound coming off of him. They've actually done studies in sound chambers. And what's happening is on the leading edge of the wing, there's a serration to the feathers, breaks up that uh, sound and the wind, with the, basically the sound waves. And then they hit the soft body feathers and they don't bounce off of them. They get absorbed. So it's like the stealth bomber of the bird world. He's, uh, he's got technology. Now he can feel like today, he can actually also lift those feathers up and allow a trapped heat that might be next to his body to escape. So it's a little bit like shutters on your window or just opening your window to let heat up. That's what he can do with those feathers. And then finally, moving our way down, we can look at his foot there. He's got uh, four toes, so owls all have four toes, and they have those sharp talons on the end. That's why I'm wearing this leather glove. Uh, two forward-facing toes and two backward-facing toes. And that's a certain term if you want to impress your friends. He's got zygodactyl feet. So there he goes, big bird. But it literally means two toes front, two toes back, and it acts like a claw for catching his prey. And all of those toes are on one tendon, so it's sort of like a drawstring on a purse. They all come in together, so he can only uh, close all of his toes at the same time. He can't independently use them. And this is beneficial. If, he's, if his prey is squirming, his prey can't just lift one foot and get away, or one toe and get away. They have to deal with all of them at once. So occasionally we have to give him a little owl pedicure because his nails get a bit long and it takes our veterinarian and me both of our, uh, a lot of our strength to just open up his foot. They have a tremendous grip strength as well. He's got pretty tiny feet. Wait till we see uh, Athena over there. The great horned owl has one of the strongest grips in the bird of prey world. They can rival an eagle. That's how uh, strong they are, so you don't want to mess with those guys. Now, uh, lastly, one thing these guys all share and with birds in general is that they're also very light. So does anybody have any guesses how many pounds or kilograms Odin weighs? 15? That's a little heavy. You get, give me a lot of credit. My arm would be strong. Nine? Oh, we're going the same way? Five! 2.2 is the closest. This still can go a little lower. 1.5. He's about 1.5 to 1.7 uh, pounds, depending on the uh, time of year and the, exactly what he's up to. So he ranges from 600 to about 750 grams, uh, depending if it's summer or winter. So very light. Of course, you want to be light if you're a bird. Just ask the ostrich. It sucks to be a heavy bird. You can't fly. So being light helps you uh, with your flight. And they have several adaptations to be light. He's, uh, what we're mostly seeing here is feathers. So we mentioned uh, he's got that dense coat of feathers. You have to go a long way to those feathers to find his body. So he's got a tiny little body. And in that body, a lot of his big bones, his uh, wing bones, his leg bones, and his shoulder bones are hollow and filled with air rather than with marrow or blood. And that is a great uh, weight savings. And also, if he gets into really uh, heavy exertion, maybe from flying, he can actually draw on the air that are in those bones as part of his respiratory system as well. So well designed.
And I keep referring to him as a he. We can tell uh, the easiest way with owls to tell a voice from the girls is by size. But of course, you have to know what you're looking at. I've uh, worked with probably over a thousand barred owls, and he's actually quite tiny for a barred owl. At, uh, he weighs about 750 grams. So he, uh, a female barred owl, rather, with about 12 to 1300 grams. So the females are about a third to almost double the size of the boys. And that's because the girls have to lay the eggs, protect the nest, defend it against predators or anything trying to get in. And the boys are the hunters, so they go out. It helps to be a little more nimble, fly around, and catch their food, and get around tree branches. So that's a lot of um, owl facts in general for you guys. Now we're going to take a few minutes with each of these uh, birds and bring them up to uh, show you. We'll start with Odin, since he's already on my hand here, tell you about his species, and then we'll move on to Cleo and Athena over there. So Odin is a bard owl, and that's B-A-R-R-E-D, not bard as in Shakespeare. He doesn't write any poetry that we know of. <laughs> and he gets that name because of the, the beautiful coloration, the beautiful lines that he has on his feathering there. So on the front and on his back, he's got a whole bunch of different uh, lines, and another word for lines are bars, so bard owl. That's how he gets that name. Now, barred owls are traditionally, over uh, in the past a couple hundred years ago, you wouldn't have found any barred owls in Western North America. They're an eastern species of owl. And her name Wildlife Ambassador, and our oldest owl, she's now 10 years old, and she's a female barn owl. So B-A-R-N. Yeah, she's a, she's a good looking bird. So of course we call them barn owls because it's pretty simple. They live in barns for the most part, especially around humans. Before there were barns, they would live in old trees, hollowed out trees, decaying logs, things like that. But these guys are a little different now. You'll notice some new features that are quite a bit different than Odin. And now that Odin's back up on his perch there, you can see how he blends into that dark forest environment. Especially if he was back in the trees, near the tree trunks, he'd be hard to spot. But Cleo would sort of stand out like a sore thumb in these, uh, in these forests up here because she has different camouflage. She's got that light brown on her back and grays, and then underneath she's quite light, and she has those little spots on her body. So that coloration tells us that she's not from up here, not from a forest environment. So she's uh, an open field hunter. Of course, if you start to think about it, you find barns on fields, and that's why they live in barns. The other reason they like little barns is it's kind of like having your bedroom above your kitchen. Uh, mice also like barns, so she can hop down and grab a house whenever she wants to when she sees it there. Now, if you imagine her flying over those open grassy fields, you can imagine that this coloration, this brown and this gray, would blend in. All those little dots would blend while she's in flight. So she'd be really hard to see from above. And against an evening sky, she'd be hard to spot if you were her prey. So these guys being sort of a medium-sized owl, they not only have to be camouflaged for their prey to make it easier to hunt, but they have to be camouflaged from above, specifically because other owls can be jerked. Our female teenage great horned owl, and she's ripping on, she's like, oh yeah, there we go. Latina is a fairly young bird. She came to us also last year. She was born in eastern Canada, in Ontario, and she was born in a center there that uh, raised birds to be education birds. And then after she was two months old, she migrated west on WestJet. And then we picked her up at the airport, and we finished uh, raising her here. So she was about uh, three yeah, about three months when she arrived here last year. And we continued that process of imprinting. And you might hear, uh, as we walk here, listen for a little sound. She makes it like a And that's her baby call. So we'll see if she makes it. She usually makes it. That's a call that young birds will be making to their parents. And that's something she probably won't ever outgrow, because she is going to be around people for her life. So when she's around us, she's going like, hi, I'm here. I'm Athena. What's up? Anybody got the mice? And uh, she's just talking to her parents. And when they leave the nest, this would stop. But because they're always going to be around us, she'll keep making those noises. Now, right away, you'll see some striking features. So obviously, we call her a great horned owl because of her size. She's great in size. And she's got these fake little horns on top of her head there. The technical, another fancy word for you. They're called puma horns. And that just means they're uh, just it's like a cat. So all those are doing is making her look even bigger and more impressive than she already is. So Adina, uh, these guys are found all over North America, but a little more in the north. They don't do well in the warm temperatures, so you'll find them more in uh, northern Canada and in the cold parts of the eastern United States. And there are relatives found around the world, other horned species of owl, including the largest owl in the world, which can get up to, the fishing owl is related to them, and get up to close to four kilograms. So she doesn't weigh quite that much. She's just under two kilograms. She's about 1,800 grams, so she weighs uh, about four pounds. So they... Um, they have a couple things uh, to protect them. They don't have a sense of smell. And then they actually have a third eyelid that slides over their eye. It's kind of like built-in safety goggles to help protect their eye from things like skunk spray, dirt, or if there's uh, rain in the air. They can close it. It's transparent so they can still see through it while they're hunting and they don't have to flank and miss their prey. So lots of things uh, making us one of the most deadly predators out there. And you can listen for her call at night. It sounds like uh, who's awake. She doesn't really answer. So that's a lot of uh, owl facts for you guys. I'm going to stick around. I'm going to invite Jevin to Athena. If you'd like to come up to an owl, if you owl person, uh, feel free to do that. Hey, where are you going? And we just ask you to sort of take yourself out along the way when you can. And then I'll walk back to Athena. Then you guys just come and have your dinner. Uh, we have Brian and Sue, our two grizzly bears in the habitat over there. We haven't visited with them yet. You can just keep following these white stockings on the ground to take the right out to the grizzly bear habitat. And then our beef tail is running for 7 p.m. We just went back to the very top of the tree. I think there's a restaurant in there up there, babe.
thing eventually. And I was like, so you just eat yourself off the cliff? <laughs> Oh, two of them. You wanna sit there? This one go over. <sighs> you can see the Fort Ryan there. Yeah. We can see this one. Right? So I had the mountains and stuff. No, don't put it there. I'm sitting here in the best spot in Vancouver right now, overlooking Mount Baker. Mount Baker is out that way, and the uh, and the Port Mountain Bridge is that way. And uh, you can see Burrard Inlet this way. It's a beautiful area. So we're here at Grouse Mountain, on top of the world of Vancouver. Oh, it's now time to eat cookies.
Did you catch that? Yeah. What are you eating? Grass? Grass, dear. I'm gonna get through that fence. You can jump to the fence if you want. I'm gonna get killed. Maybe you want to go on audio. But you can actually see your radio. Where is your stick? Okay. GoPro stick? Okay. Oh, okay. Let's go up there. Let's go up there. Up up there. Oh. Okay, let's buy them.
too. And I said, come.
There's a plain stones in them. Plain stones. Plain stones, what? Yeah. Oh, it looks like, oh, it looks like plain stones? Yeah. Well, that's called the grind, which I didn't take you on because you would not make it, or I. Ooh. At least I Babe, you should go on the other side there. It's because here you're covered by the trees. Hi guys, this is the view up here in Rose Mountain. You can see the light from Vancouver. Only the lights you can see because it's night and night. Now the trees are way there. Not really good. See? You can just see that. Push. Ah, this one. This is nice. Push the middle. You can focus in by pushing the middle. Ah. Right there. The view from Vancouver. With the moonlight. And we are catching our gondola around 9 o'clock. So right now it's around quarter to nine. I'm just making a short video. For my viewers, this is Vancouver lights there. City of Vancouver. Right there. In one moment. And right here is the Ghost Mountain restaurant. Everything 
is closed now. We are going home. Where's the ladies? It's already closed. I'm going to the washroom. Look at this carving inside the restaurant. Big log of carving. Both of them. This is the alley going to the restaurant. What a nice light. Waiting for my husband. He has the ticket.
Where's your ticket? Huh? Where's the ticket? In your bag. In the top, in the small one. Can you co close it, please? We're going home now. This is our ticket. Okay, let's go. This one as well? Yeah. The, no, this one as well? The picture? Where? The underneath, this one. Oh. There's two? I'll scan both. Yeah, we have two. Thank you. You're welcome. Did you guys hike up? Did you hike up? Did you hike up? <laughs> Did you hike? <laughs> We're sorry to suffer. We're safe. Here, here, it's coming, it's coming. There you go. There's the restaurant where we are. So this one's leaving at 9.15, which means you're going to be stationed for about four minutes here. Oh, okay, no, no problem. Good until we're about to leave. No problem. This is our ticket. It's so dark. Okay. Or just keep those masks over your mouth and nose for the remainder of today's ride, as well as keep standing in the same standing location. In just a moment, we'll be passing over the first of two towers of the tram, so this way as we go over to see you may wish to study yourselves. Any questions along the ride? My name is Ricky, so don't hesitate to ask, otherwise, just enjoy. We're going down now. I do find on box I'm not too sure. 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 I
Yeah, I'm not going to go. 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 Yeah, I'm Thank you. We're done.